The film you are about to see has no characters, it has no people. It is a film to describe to you and explain visually the effect of cymatic frequencies on texture, structure, water, oil. If you spare a little of your imagination as you watch this film as it runs, you will see many things that answer many questions. You will see living forms, living amoeba, almost animal-like creatures. You will see continents being formed, the Earth itself coming into existence. You can see all this and watch it before your eyes. Everything owes its existence solely and completely to sound. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God. We are told that this is how the world began and how creation took shape. If we put that into the modern idiom and say that into the great voids of space came a sound and matter took shape. Please watch carefully. Dr. Peter Guy Manners laid the foundation. Now we delve even deeper. The question is, are you ready to uncover the truths that have been meticulously concealed for centuries? Frequency and vibration, concepts long studied with their sheer power archived in thousands of classified documents. The CIA, amongst other agencies, has detailed the immense capabilities of these forces. Their potential to induce earthquakes isn't merely a conspiracy theory. It's a documented reality. Numerous patents reveal the potential to influence weather patterns, hinting at the capacity to create rain and even hurricanes. The military's clandestine involvement in this domain suggests the gravity of its implications, the secrecy, the layers of obfuscation, all point to something profound. Consider this, the Wi-Fi signals permeating our environment are invisible forces we've come to rely upon. It's there, always present, allowing us to connect, communicate, and navigate our digital world. Similarly, the television, a staple of modern living, functions through electronic beams scanning rapidly back and forth, translating signals into images and sounds. This is the palpable power of frequency, present in our everyday lives, often relentless distractions. Our attention spans wane. We stand at the brink of revelations about sonic sorcery, yet risk being pulled away by a mere ping on our devices. The Illuminati, that shadowy ensemble, is believed to possess arcane knowledge of these frequencies, using them as instruments of control, influence, and dominion. There's a silent battle, an ongoing hunt for specific powerful frequencies that can reshape the very fabric of society and reality. If we falter, if our attention wavers, we may lose more than just a piece of information. We might lose an entire battle in a war we didn't even know we were a part of. It's a battle for knowledge, for power, and for the future of our world. So, I urge you, as we venture deeper into this world of hidden harmonies and clandestine chords, to remain vigilant. Understand the urgency. These aren't mere sounds or vibrations. These are the threads weaving the tapestry of our reality. Guard your focus, for in it lies the key to unlocking secrets that could define the course of our future. As we pull back the layers of secrecy, deception, and sonic sorcery, brace yourselves for truths that might just redefine everything you thought you knew. The quantum realm has often been likened to a vast, unfathomable ocean where the waves and particles dance in a choreography so intricate it defies classical understanding. But what if the choreography itself was not just a dance of probability, but was set to a precise vibrational score? To grasp this, consider the phenomenon of quantum entanglement. Two particles become interconnected in such a way that the state of one instantaneously affects the state of the other, no matter the distance between them. Preliminary studies from undisclosed research centers have found peculiar oscillations in entangled particles, hinting at a possible frequency that underpins from undisclosed research centers have found peculiar oscillations in entangled particles, hinting at a possible frequency that underpins this connection. Whispered figures suggest these oscillations may resonate at around 2.3 terahertz. 
Curiously, this frequency finds echoes in ancient Vedic texts that speak of akasha or the ethereal fabric connecting all existence. Then, there's superposition, where quantum particles exist in all possible states simultaneously until observed. But could these states be influenced by external frequencies? Recent experiments in shielded underground labs away from the public eye have found that specific resonances around 260 gigahertz can momentarily stabilize the superposition of certain particles, making them momentarily observable without collapsing. There's an obscure allegory in Sufi traditions that discusses a divine sound stabilizing the essence of being. Could this be an early allusion to the principles of superposition? Beyond these phenomena, there's the mystery of quantum tunneling, where particles seem to teleport through barriers. Recent classified reports suggest that when barriers are exposed to a frequency near 5.8 terahertz, the likelihood of tunneling increases exponentially. Dive into ancient Tibetan scripts, and one might encounter references to sound-enhanced practices allowing monks to pass through solid matter. An exaggeration, or an early grasp of quantum principles. The concept of quantum harmonics is emerging from the depths of hidden research. Drawing from guarded manuscripts, it appears that the Chinese I Ching's hexagrams might be symbolic representations of particular quantum states, each resonating at specific frequencies ranging from 400 gigahertz and 3 terahertz. In exploring these vibrational codes, one can't help but sense we are on the precipice of a deeper understanding of the universe. We are on the precipice of a deeper understanding of the universe. How might our worldview shift if we accept that every quantum interaction is part of an orchestrated symphony? And what if, by tuning into these frequencies, we can glimpse the concealed melodies that have, for eons, directed the dance of existence? It's an established fact that DNA, the very blueprint of life, is influenced by various factors, from radiation to chemicals. However, a growing body of underground research suggests that there is an unseen influencer, an auditory element, sound waves. Delving deep into molecular biology, one uncovers that our DNA isn't just a passive string of information. It's dynamic, responding to its environment in ways that are still being explored. It has long been believed in esoteric circles that certain segments of our DNA, often termed junk by mainstream science, are not useless at all. Instead, these segments may hold dormant potentials, awaiting the right trigger for activation. Enter the clandestine studies on specific frequencies, such as the 528 Hz, long heralded in ancient traditions as the frequency of life. When directed at living organisms, it's been observed to promote repair at the cellular level. Some hidden research documents, sourced from undisclosed labs, suggest that this frequency might play a role in the awakening of certain dormant genetic strands. Yet, 528 Hz is just a start. There's 612 Hz, a frequency less discussed and arguably more suppressed. Initial tests have indicated that it might interface directly with the human genome, subtly altering genetic expressions. And then there's the 741 Hz, which, in some hushed corners of the scientific community, is known as the intuitive enhancer. Experiments have shown that prolonged exposure enhancer. Experiments have shown that prolonged exposure can stimulate areas of the brain related to intuition and foresight. What's even more intriguing is the concept of harmonics. It's not just these primary frequencies that influence DNA, but also their harmonics, the frequencies that ripple out as secondary and tertiary effects. It's akin to dropping a pebble into a pond. The initial splash is the primary frequency, but the ripples, reaching far and wide, are just as important. But the burning question is, why is such information suppressed or tucked away in the annals of covert research? 
Is there a fear of what might happen should humanity access and harness its full genetic potential? Some suggest that the unlocking of these DNA segments could lead to abilities or perceptions long thought to be the stuff of legend, heightened consciousness, telepathy, or even innate healing capabilities. While gold fever drove many to the far reaches of the earth, a select circle of alchemists focused on a more clandestine obsession, the pursuit of forbidden frequencies, tones capable of unlocking the very essence of matter. Initiates in these esoteric arts whispered of a primordial frequency reverberating at precisely 44.6 hertz. Ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs, concealed within chambers still off-limits to modern archaeologists, seem to reference this exact frequency. Translations speak of the sound that shapes, hinting at a vibrational key which, when struck, could reorder the atomic dance. Amid the ruins of Alexandria's library, there's an oft-overlooked manuscript known only to a tight-lipped cadre. This text, the Audiomancer Codex, proposes a series of harmonics built upon the foundational 44.6 Hz. The Codex suggests that when these harmonics are layered in exact sequences, when these harmonics are layered in exact sequences, base metals like lead can be made to oscillate in a manner that mimics the atomic signature of gold. In essence, a sonic philosopher's stone. The East was not to be outdone, and the heart of Himalayas lies an ancient monastery, home to scrolls that detail vibrational rituals. Monks chant in precise tones, hitting 137.5 Hz, believed to resonate with the atomic heartbeat of Mercury. With focused intention and years of practice, they describe a fleeting but transformative shimmer within the metal, indicating a momentary shift into silver. Modern anomalies, too, bear witness to this oral alchemy. In a remote Russian lab in 1997, an experiment was purportedly conducted in absolute secrecy. Scientists exposed a bismuth sample to an intricate symphony of frequencies, crescendoing at 92.4 Hz. The bismuth's atomic structure exhibited inexplicable disturbances, displaying properties of platinum for fractions of a second. Yet, the most tightly held secrets rests with the Cymatic Guild, an organization that operates in the shadows. They are rumored to possess a tonal matrix, a grid that maps out the precise frequencies for every element on the periodic table. When paired with the elusive 44.6 Hz, the Guild claims the ability to influence atomic cohesion and effectively rewrite elemental identities. However, with power comes peril. Unconfirmed reports suggest that uncontrolled exposure to these frequencies has led to unexpected and often catastrophic results. From the spontaneous combustion of materials to the generation of miniature black holes, the stakes of this auditory art are undeniably high. As science and secrecy entwine, one must ask, are these the audio keys to a new age of abundance? or forbidden frequencies that could unravel the fabric of existence itself. Beyond the familiar blue expanse of our skies lie the vast, enigmatic stretches of space, teeming with phenomena that challenge human comprehension. One such mystique surrounds the elusive frequencies emitted by cosmic entities, frequencies that have tantalized researchers for decades. The first of these frequencies are the whispers of black holes. Contrary to popular belief, black holes are not entirely silent. Though they swallow light, they sing in gravitational waves. Recent observations pinpointed one such black hole emitting a frequency of 32 Hz. Delving into ancient scriptures, this frequency corresponds eerily to accounts of the Sumerian god Enki, described as the deity of water. Could these frequencies, then, be an echo of primordial tales and deities? Pulsars, on the other hand, operate as cosmic lighthouses. These rapidly spinning neutron stars release beams of radiation that can be converted into sound. 
one particular pulsar, PSR B0329 plus 54, has been found to emit frequencies at 1.4 gigahertz. Ancient scholars, in their cryptic manuscripts, speak of star-based rhythms corresponding to the pulse of life on Earth. Is there a connection between these pulsar frequencies and terrestrial vitality? Interstellar gas clouds, often seen as the mere canvases for starry masterpieces, hide a sonic secret of their own. These clouds, composed of dust and various gases, resonate with low-frequency hums. The Orion Nebula, one of the most studied, has been found to produce tones at around 1420 megahertz. A frequency closely related to the hydrogen line, which is often associated in arcane texts with the element's primordial importance in alchemical traditions. Even cosmic winds, streams of charged particles released from stars, carry their symphony. Our sun showers Earth with, sol showers Earth with solar wind frequencies around 500 kilohertz. Interestingly, some buried texts from the Ming Dynasty claim that certain meditation techniques align with this exact frequency, leading practitioners to profound revelations. The possibility arises, were ancient cultures attuning themselves to the voice of the sun? While these celestial tones present a compelling avenue of research, hidden knowledge hints at more than just the identification of these frequencies. Gnostic texts and alchemical manuscripts allude to the harmonization of these celestial sounds with human consciousness. The suggestion is not just to listen, but to resonate. In the vast tapestry of human history, sound has been a profound tool, a medium for communication, a vessel for emotion, and even, as some sources suggest, a key to other realities. The concept of stargates, portals to different dimensions or states of consciousness, often evokes images of high-tech machinery or arcane rituals. But what if the key to unlocking these doorways lay in the realm of the audible? What if sound frequencies, specifically honed, could open gates to the unknown? Within the guarded vaults of ancient traditions, there are allusions to such sonic portals. Egyptian hieroglyphics, for instance, depict ceremonies where massive tuning forks were struck in sequence, producing a frequency said to be 111 Hz. According to clandestine interpretations, these frequencies weren't for mere ritual or entertainment, they were to open doorways to the Duat, or the Netherworld. Similarly, in Mayan lore, specific drum rhythms, producing resonances around 214 hertz, were believed to allow priests to communicate with deities from other planes. Tibet, with its spiritually charged atmosphere, houses one of the most enigmatic traditions, the chanting of monks. When they intone their deep, resonant chants, frequency averaging 136.1 hertz, it's referred to as the frequency of Om, or cosmic unity. Those exposed to this sound in the right conditions have reported out-of-body experiences, feeling as if they've been momentarily transported to a different realm. However, understanding these sonic stargates is not just about the base frequencies, it's about the harmonics and the interplay between multiple sound sources. Consider the whisper tales from India, where the confluence of sitar, tabla, and a voice in certain ragas, said to produce a combined resonance of 417 hertz, can induce trance states where listeners claim to perceive other realities. As we traverse from culture to culture, the question inevitably arises, is there a universal master frequency that acts as the ultimate stargate? Some underground researchers hint at 963 Hz. This frequency, seldom discussed in mainstream circles, is often termed the God Frequency. Experiments with it have yielded puzzling results, from heightened intuition to vivid dreams of other worlds. Infrasound occupies a unique realm in the auditory spectrum, residing just below the threshold of human perception. Despite its invisibility to our ears, its effects are far from inconspicuous. 
These frequencies, typically falling below 20 Hz, can incite a myriad of reactions, from unease to awe, often being linked to paranormal experiences. Historical documents, obscured by time and secrecy, hint at ancient civilizations understanding the power of these silent tones. Whispered accounts from the underground corridors of Egyptian pyramids speak of chambers where infrasound frequencies of 18.98 Hz resonated, echoing the same frequency as the Fayum Oasis' winds. Those who ventured into these chambers often reported feelings of unease or of being watched, or of being watched, attributing these sensations to gods or spirits. Shifting from the sands of Egypt to the stone circles of the British Isles, Stonehenge, a marvel that still puzzles modern scientists, is believed by some esoteric scholars to act as a natural infrasound generator. During specific celestial alignments, with winds blowing from the right direction, frequencies around 17 Hz are said to emanate from its core. Legends abound of mystics and druids experiencing visions during these times. But infrasound's reach extends beyond ancient wonders. Modern encounters with the paranormal, apparitions, cold spots, and unexplained dread could be tied to these sub-audible frequencies. Some scientists postulate that infrasound at around 19 Hz can cause the human eye to resonate, leading to visual distortions or hallucinations, providing a potential natural explanation for ghostly sightings. Yet, nature isn't the only manipulator of infrasound. Classified experiments in the 20th century saw governments and secret societies delving into its potential applications. The Moscow Signal, for instance, was a rumored infrasound frequency of 9.75 Hz, said to be directed at the US Embassy in Moscow during the Cold War. Staff working there reported chronic unease and fatigue, leading to speculations of it being an infrasonic weapon. Similarly, hushed stories revolve around societies using infrasound in initiation rites. Frequencies around 12 Hz, when sustained, can produce feelings of fear and foreboding, testing initiates resolve and mental fortitude. In today's age, the potential of infrasound remains a territory of intrigue. While skeptics dismiss its effects as mere science, the line between the physical and the paranormal blurs, raising questions about our very perceptions of reality. Could these frequencies be doorways, not to other realms, but to uncharted territories of the human psyche? The silent tones continue to resonate, echoing the annals of time. Amid the tumultuous chorus of our universe, certain frequencies stand out, not because of their volume, but due to their sheer inexplicability. A puzzling 58.2 Hz signal, for instance, has been intercepted intermittently by high sensitivity receivers worldwide, defying explanation and refusing to fit into known terrestrial or cosmic profiles. Historically, the ancient city of Teotihuacan holds a tantalizing clue. Deep within the Sun Pyramid, an enigmatic chamber known as the Resonance Room was discovered. This room appears to be sonically insulated, with walls designed to focus on a narrow frequency band. Archaeologists detected traces of oscillation at a precise 58.2 Hz within, identical to the modern-day signals. Did ancient civilizations somehow tap into these otherworldly sound waves, possibly receiving knowledge or messages? Another intriguing piece in this interdimensional puzzle emerges from the eerie desolation of Siberia's taiga. Locals speak of the Singing Trees, a grove where, on certain nights, ghostly harmonics flow on the wind, centering around an oscillation of 113 hertz. Elders believe these to be songs from another realm, a dimension layered atop our own, but perceptible only through its oral fingerprint. Modern technology, too, has had its encounters with these mysterious sound waves. The clandestine HARP project, while publicly known as an ionospheric research program, reportedly detected a series of anomalous transmissions. These weren't the usual patterns one would expect from cosmic bodies or earthly sources. 
Instead, they ebbed and flowed, forming what some analysts believe to be a form of structured communication, dominated by a piercing 79.3 Hz. These signals, when visualized, form patterns eerily reminiscent of cymatic shapes seen eerily reminiscent of cymatic shapes seen in sacred geometry. Radio astronomers at the SETI Institute faced a conundrum when their deep space arrays locked onto a frequency at 145.7 Hz, emanating from the interstellar void. This was not a pulsar or a star's dying gasp, but a continuous, modulated hum. The sequence seemed random, but certain repetitions in the signal hint at the possibility of an encoded message from a dimension brushing up against our own. However, perhaps the most chilling instance remains the phenomenon known as the Void Whispers. Pilots flying over the Bermuda Triangle have reported hearing, amid the usual cockpit static, haunting melodies centered around 40.5 Hz. Some argue this might be interference, while others, more daring, speculate about the triangle being a thin spot between dimensions, allowing fleeting sonic interactions. The evidence, scattered across history and geography, poses tantalizing questions. Are these mere quirks of nature, or genuine sonic artifacts from dimensions beyond our ken? What secrets, warnings, or revelations do they bring? Only the frequencies know, and they're not telling. At least, not yet. Throughout history, cryptic texts and guarded oral traditions have hinted at an undercurrent that binds every atom, every star, and every breath of life into a singular tapestry. This clandestine knowledge speaks not of mere energy or matter, but suggests an audacious proposal, a symphony of frequencies that interlace all of existence. In a confidential gathering in 1973, an elite group of sonic researchers convened in a secluded monastery in the Himalayas. Their objective was to decipher an ancient parchment, the Svaranka Codex, detailing harmonics that resonate across multiple planes of existence. It described frequencies, like the 432 hertz, long considered by secret societies societies as the cosmic pitch, or the natural frequency of the universe. Why 432 hertz? Ancient instruments discovered in Mesopotamian ruins were found to be tuned precisely to this frequency, suggesting a universal standard of resonance. The codex also depicted visual representations akin to cymatic patterns. Cymatics, the study of visible sound, has shown that at 528 Hz, certain geometric patterns form, often akin to what sacred geometry denotes as the seed of life. This was not mere coincidence. The implication was clear. At specific frequencies, sound was not just sound. It became a bridge to visual, tangible, and perhaps interdimensional phenomena. But here's where it gets even more riveting. Advanced quantum theories now postulate the existence of a holographic universe. Every part contains the whole, and if the universe itself is a hologram, could these frequencies be the laser light necessary to interpret this grand image? Enter the Echotome device, a clandestine apparatus rumored to be developed by an unnamed scientist sought to project the universe's holographic blueprint by focusing on these forbidden frequencies. Preliminary experiments using the device, particularly at 963 Hz, reportedly rendered visual spectacles of vast cosmic networks resembling the synapses in our brain. This led some to hypothesize a macro-micro connection, as above, so below. Then there's the Rizona Manuscript of 1592, which remained untranslated for centuries due to its linguistic obscurity. When finally deciphered, it spoke of vibrations that danced to the tune of creation, and how certain tonal alignments, like 741 hertz, could dispel the veils between worlds. In tracing these auditory breadcrumbs, we're led to ask, are we, and everything around us, merely notes in a grand cosmic opus? Merely notes in a grand cosmic opus? And if so, by understanding and perhaps manipulating these frequencies,
could we gain a clearer picture of our role in this vast, resonant blueprint? To fathom these revelations is to peek beyond the universe's curtains, to hear its heartbeat, and to wonder about the symphony that plays in the spaces between. There's an often whispered belief among the esoteric circles that the universe, in its vastness, is not just a canvas of celestial bodies and expansive voids, but is an intricate composition of harmonies. These aren't merely sounds, but vibrations that form the skeletal framework of existence itself. In the ruins of Gobekli Tepe, an archaeological site older than Stonehenge, researchers stumbled upon artifacts suggesting an advanced knowledge of sound. These artifacts, when struck, emitted a frequency precisely at 528 Hz, often referred to in occult circles as the DNA repair frequency. The sacred sound is believed to resonate with the very building blocks of life, restoring balance and harmony. Delving deeper into history, the Sumerians spoke of the Anunnaki, who were said to have communicated using a series of complex frequencies. Clay tablets, still only partially deciphered, suggest that these beings mastered a sonic language. One frequency repeatedly mentioned is 417 hertz, a tone believed to facilitate change and transformation. But the mysteries aren't only in ancient relics. In modern times, the elusive Project Resonare, which vanished from mainstream scientific discourse, reportedly probed the melodic patterns emitted by supermassive black holes. Their findings were groundbreaking. Not only did these cosmic giants produce frequencies, including the haunting 639 hertz, but these sounds, when replicated, had profound effects on the human psyche, invoking deep states of meditation and introspection. The work of documentation and introspection. The work of Dr. Elena Seranova, though shrouded in secrecy, is worth noting. In her concealed labs in Siberia, she reportedly uncovered the Universal Chord, a sequence of frequencies, 396 Hz, 741 Hz, 852 Hz, that, when played in unison, aligned perfectly with the vibrational patterns of the cosmos. Some speculate this chord has the potential to unlock the universe's deepest secrets from the nature of dark matter to the realms beyond our perceivable dimensions. Furthermore, the oral archives of Alexandria, a hidden chamber only recently spoken about, houses what are said to be the sounds of celestial events from eons past. One recording, allegedly the echo from the Big Bang itself, is centered around 963 Hz, known as the frequency of the gods. It is said that those who listen to it experience a profound connection to the cosmos. Understanding the universe as a composition is to perceive its design in an entirely new light. Every planet, star, and galaxy might be playing its part in a grand interstellar symphony. And as we unravel the notes, frequencies, and harmonies, we inch closer to comprehending our role in this cosmic concert. The melodies of the universe are not just to be listened to, they are clues waiting to be deciphered. In every age, there are gateways to power, methods and tools whispered about in dark corners, the touchstones of those who pulled the strings from the shadows. Sonic sorcery is one such force, and its potential to manipulate the human mind remains one of the most closely guarded secrets of the occult elite. The ancient temples of Egypt were not just places of worship. Beneath the facades of stone and deity, a more sinister ritual took place. The hierophants, well versed in the art of sound, would employ a series of chants and vibrations, specifically 32 hertz a frequency purported to resonate with the human brain's alpha waves, inducing heightened states of consciousness and suggestibility. Fast forward to the Cold War era, and buried in the annals of classified documents lies the Project Echolalia. Its intent? To use sound as a psychological weapon. While many frequencies were experimented with, one stood out. 784 hertz. Exposure led to a range of effects, from auditory hallucinations to heightened anxiety. 
The project, though eventually discontinued, left an indelible mark on the understanding of sound's manipulative capacities. The Illuminati, that oft-cited clandestine order, has been rumored to harness the power of certain frequencies to maintain their influence. An encrypted manuscript discovered in a Viennese antique shop spoke of the Octave of Obedience, a sequence of eight frequencies, the central one being 528 Hz, believed to provoke loyalty and subservience. But it's not only about mental control, on a subtler level, Sonic sorcery weaves its way into our daily lives, influencing our moods, choices, and even health. Modern urban legends tell tales of certain retail trades using specific background frequencies, around 659 Hz, to encourage shoppers to make impulsive purchases. Yet, with all tools of power, there's a dual potential, for benefit and for harm. Sound therapy, binaural beats, and healing chants are all drawn from this same well of knowledge, offering therapeutic effects. The frequencies of 396 Hz for liberation from fear and guilt, or 741 Hz for solving problems and expressions, have provided solace to many. But herein lies the crux. Knowledge without understanding is a perilous weapon. The dance of frequencies and their resonance with our very being is a potent force. In the wrong hands, it's a siren song leading us to rocky shores. Yet, understood and respected, it's a symphony of liberation and enlightenment. As we stand on the cusp of further unearthing these sonic mysteries, we must remember that the song, while enchanting, can also ensnare. The power of sound is not just in the hearing, but in the knowing. As we close this chapter of discovery, it's imperative that we pause and reflect upon the vastness and intricacy of the universe we are attempting to decode. Through the sounds, frequencies, and vibrations, we've traversed realms both familiar and unknown, diving deep into the unseen mysteries that shape our existence. Each chapter, each revelation, has only further solidified the understanding that there is a grand designer behind all these complexities. God. It's easy to be consumed by our thirst for knowledge and understanding, but in the face of such immense beauty and precision, it's evident that there is a masterful hand at play. We strive to unravel the secrets, to grasp the ungraspable, and while we have made strides, Perhaps there are aspects of his designs that are simply beyond our mortal comprehension. In our quest for understanding, it's essential to acknowledge the source of it all. Just as a symphony would be nothing without its composer, the harmonious dance of frequencies and energies in the universe would be nothing without its creator. We've explored the intricacies of sonic sorcery, delved into hidden realms, and sought out ancient secrets, but at the end of the day, we're merely scratching the surface of God's profound tapestry. To each one of you who embarked on this journey with us, who chose to remain steadfast amidst the depths of these truths, we offer our heartfelt gratitude. Your curiosity, your open-mindedness, and your hunger for truth have made this exploration all the more meaningful. But as we conclude, remember that while we seek answers, while we push the boundaries of understanding, it's crucial to remain humble before the vastness of God's universe. For in our pursuit of knowledge, it becomes ever clearer that we are but a small part of His grand design. And perhaps some mysteries are meant to be just that, a testament to the unfathomable greatness that we are but a small part of His grand design. And perhaps some mysteries are meant to be just that, a testament to the unfathomable greatness of the divine. Thank you for staying with us till the end, for journeying through the echoes of time and space. As we step back into our lives, let's carry with us a renewed sense of wonder, gratitude, and reverence for the boundless marvels crafted by the Creator's hand.